Okay, I have a program here called Aurora 3D Text and Logo Maker. It, of course, as the name suggests, to create your own logos. But it does actually do it in 3D, although if you don't want to, you can create a 2D one. So, for example, if I click here, you get this here, like you would in another 3D program like Blender. You can rotate. Like that okay this is one of the presets you don't have to use a preset you can create it from scratch from to the left here we have your tools your normal selection tool your text tool to add some text let's just do that for instance there boom double click type whatever you want whoops didn't select it properly there you go you can have it selected and select a text preset such as ice let's just move it and you can drag it around anywhere you want it actually looks rather nicer if you notice so it did actually reset my text by applying effect so you will have to rewrite it after you apply a preset here we can go to something like say 3D at supply water not too watery but I kind of see what they mean plastic metal iron man which actually is quite a nice effect HTML5 reflection legend and let's go to something a bit sort of simple here like crystal so you kind of get the idea you can also then create various shapes such as a rectangle round rectangle eclipse circle or star you can add an arc you can add a text shape an arrow shape a SVG shape a freehand shape so you can go here and you can go Um, just doing a very, very, very random shape here. There we go. Now, let's hit save. Now, as you can see, the shape is there in the 3D space. You can move it around with the handles here as well. If it's not 3D enough for you, you can apply more of a bevel later if you like. You can add a cube, various other shapes here, or import an image, or actually import a 3D model. So you can actually import a 3D model from another program, which is very good. So as you can see, it's a very powerful tool. It isn't a very basic little program. Create a basic logo, it looks like millions of other sort of presets and stuff and templates elsewhere. You have so much flexibility, it's almost a complete 3D editor in itself very good it's available on Windows and Mac as well up here you have a drop down to select the different elements from here or edit text style brush play because you can actually do some animation as well you can export it as an image or an animation so if you select image you can select software or hardware rendering hardware would be uh, better quality than software you can then select a region you want to export. In this case, this dark blue box you can see here is the only thing that's going to be exported is what's within it. So you can make it bigger. Whoops, wrong way. You can expand that to get more into the export window. You can also make the background transparent if you like. There you go. And change image size here. You have your basic bold, italic, and shadow tool here, but that's for 2D stuff. You have your font here, font size. If something's 2D or 3D, you can, let's try this, make it 2D, make it 3D again. You have more, which is more sort of font sort of settings. That's, some of them's for 2D, some of them's for 3D, so here's 3D, here's 
I mean, here's 2D, here's 3D, character space, line space, the kind of things you'd expect for adjusting your font and your text. You can change your stroke color, you can do the text color, text bevel. So let's click here. I don't know if text bevel will. No, it's not going to change it because it's not text, but there is a way to do it uh, over here. I'll show you in a minute. Transform, fill color, bevel color, effects such as bevel. And as you can see, if you watch here on this shape I created by freehand, the bevel is changing. And if I select one I want, such as, say, this one, I can then make the bevel much bigger. You can have a round bevel or not. And as you can see, it's applied it there. And it doesn't look very good. It looks ridiculous, but that's because I put a ton on to try to demonstrate to you. You can drag it closer to the screen, and you see the lighting does affect it. You have properties, which in this case is no properties for this object. You can arrange, such as bring to front, distribute horizontally, reflection, add a reflection. You can see the reflections there. So if I move this, like over there, there there's its reflection, and you can change its distance and fade. You can adjust the background here, add a discipline color background to such as blue, purple, pink, yellow, or you can click here, I'll just click OK on that a minute, and you can click over here and click like gradient, so you can create a gradient background, let's just hit OK, or you can insert an image or a skybox or a dynamic. Let's just sort of do this. There, Dynamic is basically a moving background. You can then adjust your text more up here with these tools here. You can go to shape and there's some shape presets there or different frames, different icons, which is quite handy, such as this. So if I click here, I can turn it into that or that or that or whatever. And there's some other shapes here, including a little funny mouse. Uh, I would like to see more icons though, and if we go to light, you can, let's see, there, or how about some lightning, so there's some lightning. We can then go to color, and let's see, let's go here, then we can select various sort of pattern color styles, you can see it changing in the shape here, you can go something like that. That is applying it to the fill. You can also update the sides as well or you can update it bevel. So if we go to bevel, select here, the bevel has changed independently from the fill. If it was text, you'd select text up here and the text stroke separately as well. You can go to bevel, change the shape of the bevel. So we could have like that, then adjust the bevel height here as well. So let's sort of bring it down a bit. There you go, it's updated. You've got your reflection here as well, as well as various other tools such as animate each letter. So you can then go here and you can animate the light in as well. And down here is the actual light setting. So we have three lights here by default in this template I loaded, or you can edit the lights here. Now they're no longer greyed out and you can change the axis. You can sort of change the angle on like the X and the Y. You can change each of the color. So let's actually do that. Let's change it here. Let's go and add light two. Whoops. Light two and change that to yeah, yellow. That's why is it Okay, there we go. Then light three, we can make that maybe orange. There, and you can sort of see the light has reflected in its different colors on the different objects. Normally, of course, you would actually want it like this and have white light in. You can adjust the workspace as well, like that. 
if you want to see a bit more of that or you can bring it back out you can go to tools and select your language there is a few different language supported there is background size so you can change the resolution at the moment this preset has set it as 720p you may well you may well want 1080p uh, here is probably the one you want it is selected a selected resolution of 72 you may like to raise it a little bit higher to say 96 at least which has made it a custom you then have aspect ratio you've got various aspect ratios here you might want that let's just try that correct aspect ratio as well okay it's made our text go weird but we can always edit it to be right also the thing is, you would normally set the background sizes before, you know, the rendering size before you actually started editing and creating anyway. You can also select the different background styles from that menu as well. You can go to view and turn off various toolbars. You can go to edit and you have your standard sort of settings such as cut, copy, paste, select or arrange copy properties such as copy an animation paste onto another object lock and make the objects visible group or ungroup file you have as you'd expect open and save save as a package import an SVG or 3D model or an image from there you can export as an image animation or from here you can actually export it to the clipboard at the time of making this video I am using the latest version of Aurora 3D Maker it is 1.45.21 so what do I think of Aurora 3D logo maker I'm actually very pleasantly surprised when you you do see a lot of logo makers uh, software and online versions and they tend to be very limited and basically you can only basically create logos that tend to look very similar to other ones and it's quite hard to create a unique thing but this not only have you got a lot of tools but it's 3D and the 3D isn't just very basic like it is in some other programs for this sort of thing it is very full featured you have a complete 3D workspace here you can also import your own 3D models from so you can create a really fancy 3D model in an actual 3D package such as Blender and then import it into this and add text around it, whatever, to make it more of a logo. So that is very handy that you can import 3D models. So I recommend you go and check it out and at least download a trial. It is available on Windows and Mac. Please like and share this video and if you could do me a huge favour and subscribe as it only takes a few seconds and help me out a lot. Thanks.